Hello and welcome to this session where we shall discuss and appreciate the nature of leadership. This session outlines our understandings of leadership, accepted definitions of leadership, associated theories and leadership in practice. As for the learning outcomes, by the end of this session you should be able to provide a definition for contemporary leadership, explain key leadership theories and modelling, outline the importance of the role of leadership in business and apply these leadership principles through relevant exercises. So to begin, a question, what is leadership? You may, compared to traditional management theory, associate leadership with intangible, more human-centric attributes, traits and behaviours within the workplace. This would be correct as leaders prove themselves and achieve great things through how they communicate and engage with their teams. This could be realised in given situations with regards to the internal and the external environments of the organisation. As with management, there is no single universally accepted definition of the term leadership, which is why it is so important to ensure that we understand exactly what we mean when we use the term. The definition here from Gupta et al 2004 gives us some idea of the complexity associated with the term leadership, but it also gives us a starting point to build an understanding of what leadership means for modern organisations. Leadership is about creating a vision and direction for people. This is in contrast to management, which is concerned with organising and directing individuals and teams to achieve agreed organisational objectives, which are related to their own organisational vision. The two roles of leader and manager are nearly always intertwined. One cannot exist without the other. So while you will be expected to manage the day-to-day -day aspects of getting things done, you will also need to create some vision, focus and direction for your staff. This can be on a small scale where small teams need to understand and to see what has to be done. It can also be on a grand scale where you are leading a whole organisation or group of organisations. Leadership styles can vary greatly and there is no right or wrong way to lead. You will develop your own leadership style in time, but to begin with, we will consider some of the well-known approaches. Buchanan and Hixinski, 2010, also provide a definition of leadership, where they focus on the process of influencing teams and realising goal attainment. Also, Mintzberg categorises the various roles of leadership individuals, where, as you see, a leader is crucial towards the establishment and attainment of organisational objectives, which leads to individual ambitions within organisations. Leaders combine what they feel with what they know. This aids the organisation in being responsive at the right time and with the right people, but actions must include a strong and supportive message. The key to great leaders is their ability to communicate. Recognised types of leaders are extensive, but as we shall see in the digital lecture, all hold dear the notion of inspirational working relationships which drive the organisation forward. This is in terms of success and, more notably, in times of uncertainty. We acknowledge that being a leader is an inherent trait which comes to the fore in a particular situation, problem or set of issues. For organisations and for given jobs, a set of skills or traits are evident in effective and efficient leaders. This includes motivating and driving the organisation forward, being positive and dynamic, assured and confident in their decisions and actions, and of course, being assertive and adaptable to environmental changes and solving internal problems. Many now argue that leadership is essential to management in the 21st century, which makes it the difference between success and failure. This change has been brought about by the following reasons. Firstly, with flatter organisations, older and dated systems of hierarchical authority are now deemed inappropriate. Secondly, Organisations facing rapid and constant change need vision, creativity and leadership to thrive. Thirdly, effective control is best achieved through strong values embodied within leadership. And furthermore, employees are more demanding and require strong leadership. Simply put, effective and believable leaders must be emotionally and socially intelligent. This concerns being aware of dynamics of the, within the organisation and aware of market and industrial fluctuations out with it. Why do I say believable? Well, your workforce will work hard for you if they get you and your vision for the company. If communication lines, the rhetoric projected, 
or responses to workforce questions or grievances are weak, then a leader will fail in the long run. Therefore, it is imperative that leaders lead by example and establish appropriate, approachable and healthy working relationships. With regards to these particular fluctuations and changes, a number of factors contribute. These contributing factors include the evident technological and communication advancements, increased competition and the tightening of production and lead times to meet market and consumer demands. Also, organisations during periods of uncertainty or downturn, such as financial recessions impacting globally, downsize or restructure. This can affect trust and cohesion between levels of the organisation. So, a couple of relevant questions to consider at this point. What makes a good leader? And secondly, where do you find such good leaders? The principles of leadership can be applied to any context or environment where people come together to work towards a common goal, whether that be in the world of the military, sport, politics, social justice, exploration, business, religion or commerce. The individuals pictured here are all clear examples of entrepreneurial leaders, known for challenging the norm within their own sphere. From left to right, starting with the top row, Napoleon, Alex Ferguson, Winston Churchill, Bob Geldof, Robert Falcon Scott, Bill Gates, Pope John Paul II and Bill Gates. As for leadership theory, trait theory is based around the idea that you have either got traits associated with leadership or you have not. The assumption is not that you are born with the characteristics that identify as leadership. In this theory, there is no requirement to identify how leadership was developed. In trait theory, the focus is on identifying traits that differentiate leaders from non-leaders. Trait theory is highly plausible until you try to pin down exactly what these special qualities are. When you compare the traits of one recognised leader with those of another, the list of traits are often significantly different. This poses a credibility problem for the theory, which as yet has not been resolved. Notwithstanding these problems, the approach has re-emerged under the guise of management competencies in person specifications for management positions. The candidate is required to possess characteristics such as ambition and energy, desire to lead, honesty and integrity, self-confidence, intelligence and job relevant knowledge. The idea remains that we can then use our knowledge of traits to select the right people to take on leadership roles. However, it might be possible to possess these traits and still be bad at leadership. Nevertheless, the characteristics themselves seem desirable for someone taking on a senior role. As leadership theory has developed, a number of identifiable streams of research has been realised. These include charismatic, visionary, transformational, transactional and authentic leadership. They assist more so in labelling the many types of leaders rather than indicating an extensive and deeply rooted progression of the theory. However, three dominant theories of leadership, however, are trait, style and contingency. Trait theory refers to identifiable characteristics witnessed from individuals within the organisational context. Style theory addresses the adaptable approaches to an organisation that are deemed suitable and conducive to the culture of the organisation. Finally, contingency theory. This is a reactive approach to leadership where individuals are installed as leaders to face particular strategic and operational issues that the organisation faces. More recent approaches to leadership research have focused on the complex, competitive and changing environments typical of 21st century business. The leadership skills of much of the previous generations of managers is now referred to as transactional leadership. Transactional leadership works well in stable, predictable environments, but not in modern ones. The emphasis is now on transformational leadership. Transformational leadership is associated with vision, inspiration and charisma, with a distinct focus on high performance and consumer responsiveness. Contemporary leadership theory has evolved with its associated principles being rightfully embedded into the human resources and organisational development disciplines. Training, developing and duly rewarding employees are core products of effective leaders who empower their workforce. These HR-rooted activities further encourage the culture of the organisation 
and promote transactional and transformational modes of leadership. The work of Blake and Moten and others led to the idea that one style of leadership for all situations might not in fact be the most appropriate approach. Each situation demands a different style. This led to the development of the contingency models of leadership. The best known contingency models are those of Tienenbaum and Schmidt, Fiedler and House and Mitchell. These models, however, are quite complex and beyond the scope of this session. Suffice to say that each model uses a different set of variables or contingencies to determine what style of leadership is the most appropriate for a given situation. John Adair, 1983, is an influential author and practitioner in the field of leadership development, who describes leadership as having three overriding components, achieving the task, building and developing a team, and developing an individual. Unpredictably, these are all prescribed as three components that have to be achieved for an individual to be considered as a successful leader in a working or task-based context. In developing this further, aligned with any leadership-related model in general, Adair's model concerns tasks, individuals and the maintenance of groups. Without witnessing and acting upon these hard and soft aspects of organisational work, there is no successful mechanism for effective and efficient work to be achieved. Central to the idea of entrepreneurial leadership is the style of leadership itself. This model from Jordan, 2010, highlights four main styles and identifies the key aspects of power and love. Sources of power can be internal or external. A focus on how we love an organisation can also be internal or, or external. How these relate to each other results in one of four leadership styles. Alliance, authoritarian, reflective and authentic leadership. Firstly, alliance leadership. This style of leadership is about who you know and where you work. Power comes by association with powerful people. Your boss becomes very important to you as you seek to gain what you want by pleasing the right people. Secondly, authoritarian leadership. This style of leadership is command and control. These leaders are very connected to their titles, office size and location, money and other symbols of power they accomplish through others. Thirdly, reflective leadership. These leaders start to realise that authoritarian leadership only works until it stops working. They become reflective and search for integrity and wholeness. They are in an intentional process of finding congruence between internal actions and internal reflections. Their organisational strength is based on their competence and burgeoning self-awareness. Finally, authentic leadership. These leaders possess the paradoxical blend of humility and ego, but channel the drive they have into the good of others and to serve others. They have a purpose beyond themselves. They are settled in their own skin and can radically support the empowerment of others. Some environments lend themselves to a particular leadership style. However, the effective entrepreneurial leader is not afraid to have to move between these leadership styles as when appropriate. As for styles of leadership, Blake and Mutton's 1964 managerial grid is wholly relevant. Although similar to the Ohio framework, they created a grid with concern for people on one axis and concern for production on the other. Middle of the road management had some concern for both people and production and was commonly found. Impoverished management had little concern for both people and production and this was seen as indicative of failing management. Team management had great concern for both people and production and was typically associated with successful management in general. However, there were two other extremes. One is country club management, found where keeping employees happy is more important than doing a good job, perhaps among voluntary workers in a charity shop. The other extreme is authority compliance, used where staff are considered expendable, such as in a sweatshop for example. The following tutorial task is designed to allow students to explore and apply the theory from this session. For this tutorial task, recall and reflect on a time where you organised or managed a particular task, duty or event. Then, consider the following four questions. So, question one, 
What did you do? Question two, what were your thoughts at the beginning? Question three, what personal traits were evident? And finally, question four, did you feel anything about you, work-related attributes, etc., had changed?